before we get into the news, make sure to subscribe to my first and second channels and hit the notification bell to stay notified of future uploads. And follow my Instagram to get notified more frequently of MMA news before it is posted on my YouTube channel, and feel free to follow my Facebook and Twitter as well. Conor McGregor doesn't take up Khabib's dad's suggestion on his opponent for his for his comeback fight. Interesting. But before we get into that, I would just like to say again, thank you guys so much for commenting your perspectives on these types of stories. Because as I've said previously, roughly, that it's always good to get another um, angle on things. And as a person who is a fan of the sport, I believe there's always something to gain from everyone or something to learn from everyone. So when you comment or leave a rating on my video, I want you to be doing so in your own right. I don't want you to be going along with what someone else might have said. And I may, I'm, I, I haven't touched on this before, but I feel with each video you will learn something new about why I do certain things. So, before we get into the stories I have prepared today, I would like to talk about why I hit the comment sections, or no, the uh, ratings for the video and the subscribers for the video. So, back in the day we used to have newspapers and I remember reading you know really really old newspapers and it was nice because from the outside I couldn't see any biases you know of, of course without you know reading in uh, the news like reading in depth on the newspaper itself but in terms of YouTube, um, the reason why I hit those things is because I wanted each and every viewer out of the hundreds to um, take in the product I have offered them um, with a clean canvas. So before that viewer views the video I have spent time on I don't, I don't want them to follow in the footsteps of what other people have done and judge my product before they have even watched my video so that is why I hit the like button and just so you know people still do leave ratings on my videos and I do appreciate that I, I see every rating so if someone were to like my video I would see it and similar with someone disliking my video and of course again thank you so much for the comments because I tell you what when you guys leave the comments I literally get a notification on my phone for every literally every comment that is posted to the uh, forum and I literally read it I read it right then and there and as some of you know I, I am in the comments section heavily and you know you know I have things to say and this is really good because if you're a UFC 
uh, MMA fan, doesn't matter. You can speak your truth in the comments section and correct me. And that's really what I was going for. I was going for um, a non-biased experience and the ability for me to interact with the community because I believe, you know, we have the same mindset to a degree and that's what makes it fun. So again, that is why I hid the subscriber button and the ratings button. Not, not saying I'm afraid to release those numbers or I have an anxiety. No, my numbers are good, I believe. But that is why I did what I did. Also, this is like a little, this is the little update portion I wanted to give my audience before we, we really get into it. My second channel. So in my intro screen, you may have noticed uh, I do promote my second channel because uh, interesting uh, enough, that's where it kind of all started. I just renamed the channel, uh, having it being the second, you know, in this in this brand. But really, it was the first. So let's talk about what I plan for that channel roughly in the future. For that channel, it will be kind of a live streaming type of channel where I in or I react to UFC pay-per-views with the audience. I won't be showing the actual UFC pay-per-view but if you're a viewer, you would get to watch the pay-per-view on your device while watching my live stream and we can react to the pay-per-view together. So that is a little tease of what I have planned for the future of that channel. But in the meantime, I would say in a few, I'm going to start posting some videos um, from this channel on that channel. Uh, you know, with a, a slight um, difference, but not too much, just to kind of revive that channel. Because, as you know, with the YouTube algorithm, if you don't post in a week, that's really bad for your channel. So, uh, similar to the instance I had with uh, this YouTube channel, I haven't, I remember. When I came back after a month hiatus, I posted things that I knew would get views again to try and revive my channel. Now, the update is done. Let's get to Conor McGregor. So we know about Conor McGregor going to Russia. We know about him wanting a comeback fight so he can increase his stock in the UFC and in his fans eyes so he can stop seeing those memes on his Twitter that his fans his creative fans keep creating and I gotta say when I looked at those memes I was like wow how do they do that stuff so shout out to his fans so in this, in the beginning of this video, I said Conor McGregor avoids Khabib's dad's comeback opponent suggestion. So, and another thing I would like to, a little disclaimer before I read Conor McGregor's tweet. With these Russian names, I'm not even going to try and pronounce them. Uh... What me and Conor McGregor have in common is that we do have problems pronouncing these names. Perfect example, in Conor McGregor's Russian press conference, he did have a problem pronouncing Khabib Nurmagomedov's full name. He, almost, he stumbled in his words. But let's get to Conor McGregor's tweets. 
he says to Khabib's dad, um, I respect your training methods and what you have done, but I laugh at the water boy and team nutritionist Islam as an opponent. Islam um, is Khabib's training partner. I do not engage in sports combat with convicted steroid cheats. It is your son Abdul, your middle son. I already got your eldest. So in this tweet, in this tweet, obviously he he's responding to Khabib's um, dad. And I would say this. I remember saying in the comment section when I was responding to uh, some people about Conor McGregor going to Russia and, and me thinking that it was kind of weird. Well, yeah, I remember saying, okay, why would you want to go somewhere where everyone secretly hates you? That was my thing. Khabib's dad is an interesting character to me. So, as I said, he suggests Conor McGregor's comeback opponent. We've even heard him um, suggest Conor McGregor and Khabib rematch. And with this and even in the video I posted yesterday uh, on Khabib's dad responding to Conor McGregor coming to Russia I'll pull up the information I found now Khabib's dad said he hit a man who is older than his father and this goes back to the bar incident he is accused of violence against a woman now that is that is interesting uh, okay he also uh, advertises alcohol okay we know about that the, the proper 12 are there really questions after all for me he goes on to say I'm literally going through my own video right now the media and those who invited him assent to McGregor. You should not support him. You are a citizen of Russia. If you, a citizen of Russia, began to insult, then I would stop people. But you do not. Let's see what else he says. He insulted the people and the people who, together with the Soviet people, defended our homeland. Let me see. Okay. It seems like that's all I, that's all I put in there or that's all he said. But yeah, Khabib's dad is an interesting character. So, as I've said, he he wants the rematch and he wants Conor McGregor to fight Khabib's training partner. And he makes comments such as those about the Soviet people. Khabib's dad is very knowledgeable. He knows a lot. Just by reading all that stuff. So, as I said in the comment section, why would you go... To a country where everyone secretly hates you. And it seems like. Khabib's dad. Secretly hates Conor McGregor. Because here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that. Khabib's dad wants. The rematch with Khabib. So can, Khabib can get. Another huge paycheck. I'm thinking. Khabib's dad wants Conor McGregor to fight Khabib's training partner 
to raise the stock, the status, the money income of Khabib's training partner. Because as we know, you put Conor McGregor's name in anything, it comes to fruition. You know? To be honest, I really didn't know who Khabib was until, you know, Conor McGregor started interacting with him, whether it be in the hallway or the Dolly situation. Uh, uh, you know? So, we got to look out for Khabib's dad and all this. He, I feel he's a mastermind. He knows how to play the game. He knows he wants his camp, not just Khabib, to be famous and rich. That's why I think he wants Conor McGregor to fight Khabib's training partner. Smart move by Khabib's dad. Now, let's get into Ben Askren. So, in my previous videos, I do roughly speak on Ben Askren losing to Damian Maya, the best grappler in MMA, as people are starting to say. Um, except for Dylan Danis, who surprisingly would claim he is the best grappler in MMA after Ben Askren lost, surprisingly. So in an interview backstage, Ben Askren reflects on his loss. I'm going to read what he had to say. Yeah, I mean, kind of as we planned, there was a couple of positions I would have liked to get to a mule tie clinch more often, but he was able to stay out of that. Damian Mai was able to stay out of that. But I was landing the punches I wanted to land. I was landing my uppercut really well. And then I was getting the takedowns. I think I had four or five takedowns, I believe. And then I made a really bad decision. I remember thinking I won the first round. You know? But who knows that the judges say they are crazy. But I felt like I won the first two rounds. And when I got reversed in the third round, I looked up at the clock and thought, oh, I have a minute left. Okay, so I have to get a reversal to win this round. And we had obviously trained so much in the camp. And I had a really good jujitsu guy. And I guess I was overconfident. I guess there is a reason he is the best grappler in the division, possibly in MMA ever. You know, I was fairly confident when I went for that reversal. I was going to get it, but I didn't. I failed, and that was obviously the outcome. And in Ben Askren's treat, he does regurgitate some of the stuff he said in a, a physical interview backstage. Uh, I made a bad decision and I failed. Sorry to everyone who let, who I let down. And those people who he let down was uh, Dana White, uh, Mr. Yang, Andrew Yang for the presidential candidate. Um, probably his family. Um, you know what? Uh, we were all rooting for Ben Askren. And I say this because I did post that tweet of, yes, I made a bad decision and I felt et cetera, et cetera, um, on my Instagram. And with that, um, um, that, that type of tweet, cause I did post a series of tweets regarding this and even a fighter, uh, responding are trying to talk with Dana White on not cutting Ben Askren for the losses he has received against George Masvidal and Damian Maya. 
and no one liked my post because it gave off the impression that Ben Askren was about to be cut. Crazily enough, before Ben Askren had the fight with Damian Maya, I did post about it. I said, um, I showed a picture of Ben Askren and Damian Maya uh, standing off after the weigh-ins. And I said, I got Ben Askren. And that, that post got likes. Meaning, people were, people were rooting for Ben Askren. They really wanted him to see him succeed in this bout. And it's just sad to see. Given this data I have. The power I have. To kind of um, read people's minds. And I'm thankful as well. I'm really thankful. So, for these two stories, let me see. Let me see what else is going on in the, in the news. Um, or possibly future topics I might discuss in future videos let me see they're talking about Conor McGregor sexual assault allegations um, we talked about okay Conor McGregor issues call out on Khabib um, talks about his comeback date we talked about that Conor McGregor gives a prediction for Nate Diaz versus George Masvidal. We learn that he's in favor of Nate Diaz because that would lead to a Nate Diaz Conor McGregor 3. And that would be really good for Conor McGregor's stock. Uh, oh, wow. Michael Bisping agrees with Dana White on Conor McGregor no longer being the man. And again, all of this is coming from BJPen.com. And when I do find stories or articles on this, on MMA, UFC, whatever you want to call it, I do reference BJPen.com's news source. I do reference MMA Fighting news source. I do reference MMA Junkie news source i even reference mma world youtube channel i reference mma focus youtube channel as we have seen in the last video i do reference a lot of places to get this information you know uh i learned different news outlets have their strengths and weaknesses and push and pull in the game of ufc so Let's see here. Let's see what else I might talk about in future videos. Okay, so M McGregor has an alleged SUV incident. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. If you know about this SUV incident, something about a club, you let me know in the comments section. Because again, as I said in my previous video, I'm all about hearing the different perspectives you guys have. Because that means I get to become more knowledgeable and possibly report on it. Perfect example. Um, by reading the comment section, someone directed me to pay attention to Conor McGregor's chest. And him possibly having a really, really small chest. And the tattoo was on his chest to hide the fact that his chest is really, really small. Again, I learned that from someone in the comments section. So trust me, I'm in the comments section. I'm reading, I'm studying, and I'm getting more knowledgeable on this type of stuff because I tell you what, you guys are smart. You know what's going on. Just because I have this platform doesn't mean I know everything. So yes, feel free to correct me 
if need be. And if uh, you need to direct me to a, a particular source, uh, then direct, you know, be a leader in the comment section. Don't follow. Let me see here. Uh, oh, wow. Michael Bisping says Israel Adesanya can overtake Conor McGregor as the biggest UFC star. And that goes back to the post on Instagram where uh, it said uh, where Conor McGregor commented on UFC holding him back. And a, a, a person below or commented on that post about, you know, uh, stars die out and new stars are born. And I would. Uh, give examples such as Amanda Nunes and Israel Adesanya. Um, and that's what it seems. It's all I'm seeing for today. Oh, wow. Tyson Fury Tease is working with Conor McGregor for MMA run. So again, I'm just roughly going over topics I might talk about in the future. Future videos. And again... This is just me scrolling on bjpen.com news source uh, for um, October 28th. So any news that is posted here on out, I don't, uh, you know, as far as this video, I didn't, I don't really speak on, but let's look at some of these comments from my previous videos and see what you guys are saying. So I have the ability to literally look at all the comments left on my channel, like on one page, you know, I don't have to surf through different pages. I can just read off what's going on. So for this, I won't, say the username of who I'm getting this comment from or comments plural but I would simply acknowledge you know the comment because I tell you what I love the comments that's where I learn it's with this is what it's all about you know I said in the beginning it's a community so let's read what's going on now someone says and these are from the past few videos. And I got to say thank you again for um, engaging because I learn. I learn. And that's what it's all about. I need to learn. And I can, you know, flex some of my uh, knowledge on some of you uh, and vice versa. Someone says... Now, all of a sudden, Connor's in Moscow. He is not drinking alcohol. He wants to, uh, charity. He's fighting for money. Yeah, I know Khabib took his soul out. Now he wants to be acting as better than Khabib to restore his fake reputation. But he's still bashing Khabib. Dagestani people. I'm not going to read the rest of that comment. But yeah, um, he is trying to up his stock and UFC and with the fans so he can as I said previously so we can stop seeing those memes let me see uh, rent went to Russia for some strange reason he's promoting potentially the biggest fight of all time and that's where I would say I, I said it was strange because why would you go in your enemy's backyard and then and of course that led the following video with Rus Russians invading the hotel he stayed at, the Rich Carlton. Someone has, someone goes, or someone says, uh, MC Tapper is playing Russian roulette with the right people. If he wants trouble, he will find it. It's not just business to the Dagestani people. Words have weight and have consequences. If you don't think so, next time you see a biker club, Hell's angels are banditos. Say something. 
then tell them it's just business. We'll see how long you live for. Interesting perspective. Someone says, more like angry uh, Muslim Russians. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Someone says, if he loses this fight, his fighting career is over. And I do speak on that. Like, if he's going to make all this noise, he better back it up. I know back in the day he was able to make noise and back it up. But ho ho hopefully his opponents are not too hard and he is not too old nowadays for that. Let me see what else he says. Uh, who does he think he is going to rush and insult the Russian uh, Muslim tribe of uh, Dagestan? Didn't he Google about Dagestanis? A very fierce fighting type of Russians. Before he started to F himself up by bad mouthing about Dagestan. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of that one. Uh, let's see here. At least the bottle wants to fight. Someone said that. Uh, yeah, I got to admit, uh, Conor McGregor hasn't fought in a while and... He really needs to get back in there. And I really wish he didn't take a break. So that, that leads to the question. Did the money. Did the money he got from the Mayweather fight. Did that help? You know. Did the loss he received from Khabib. Did that help? His um, his mindset. Did that really help? Did it really benefit him? Someone says, anyone notice Connor doesn't have a chest? And again, I was speaking on, uh, let's see here. Uh, he says, his chest is small and it looks like he's covering this up with his large tattoo. Yeah, I did speak on that. Uh, and then we even have someone literally going to Moscow to confront Conor McGregor, someone uh, said in a tweet or in a uh, post, and I roughly said to someone, um, let Conor McGregor's opponents in the octagon do the talking or do the roughing up because that's where it hurts him the most. Not saying I hate Conor McGregor, it's just let's play it fair. And uh, let's do it in a professional way. I'm always about that. Sportsmanship. Someone says, uh, Conor McGregor taking out the top of the top. That's what's going to get me to be quiet. Like six or five level or above. Okay. Uh, oh, and someone uh, um, congratulates my uh, progress with the uh, my uh, YouTube channel and uh, let me see here he says uh, after he congratulates me when I heard about the McGregor conference I immediately pictured this happening it's just what happens it's a shame though in general I wish McGregor and all of his, all other fighters would put aside uh, their differences and just compete there is a talent there and there should be a focus. I admit it's great marketing what he does. It's just it works. But it would be cool to see a kind of a cap on that stuff. You can hype up a fight without going too far. And this goes back to what Tito Ortiz said about Conor McGregor is that um he 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 goes too far with his antics. Uh or his uh his style. He just goes too far. And uh, um, that was from, um, I think the interview was called Fair Game with Tito Ortiz or something like that. I don't know. I, I, I remember watching it um, yesterday, an uh, uh, interview with Tito Ortiz and his upcoming bout, I think, with um, uh, Alberto Del Rio. I think, I think, I think. Correct me. 
let me see here um, and he also mentions um, um, talking about Chel Sonnen and his YouTube channel or commenting on what Chel Sonnen has to say about things or sending in a little a little um, reply to Chel Sonnen whenever Chel Sonnen has his Q&A's so let me see here uh, and then people are saying uh, yeah uh, fighters are just taking advantage of of uh, Connor because they know uh, Connor's name it can bring money uh, they talk about the buzz and how that equals money uh, yes it's the Connor McGregor Chronicles he is making a lot of buzz and that's that's his skill he's known for that um and that's another thing too I would yes I would like to know Dana White's perspective on Conor McGregor going to Russia and him getting invaded by the Russians you know um he says another person says uh good job to Damian Maya uh, Conor McGregor is going to put his family at risk with his mouth. Peace. Uh, I feel bad for Ben Askren. I don't know if he's going to make it in the UFC. And personally, me either. Uh, karma is nasty. That's right. Someone says... Uh, wouldn't say he threw it at him. More like it in his area. Someone says if he doesn't uh, care about his opponent, why he won't sign Gaethje fight. How even massive it all called him out and now Diaz is out. Why don't he accept the fight? With all the hype surrounding massive it all, this will be a good fight for making comeback. I remember, I mean, Donald Cerrone called him out, as you said. Massive it all called him out. Gaethje called him out. Um, heck, even Tony. I don't know. I think Tony as well. And all of a sudden now he wants to come back and fight, I believe, Donald Cerrone or Justin Gaethje. And as far as George Masvidal and Nate Diaz, we learned that that fight is back on. Which is good. Very, very good. Let me see. Someone says, I swear if he loses his comeback, everyone is going to be laughing. Huh? Uh, that might be true. And then, yes, Karma. We want to see Connor versus Cerrone. He's blowing up page six right now. Yes, and Karma. Okay. So, yes, with every video, I will be reading over the comments, responding, seeing what you guys are saying, the community. Um, I gave you an update on my second channel I told you why I do certain things I do as far as hiding the ratings my numbers as far as um I just want people to have a, a clean canvas or a clean slate before they uh, view my video so when they rate my video after viewing the product I have gave them it can really be their authentic um um uh, response to what I have gave them instead of seeing oh, oh okay a group of people have disliked or so many people have disliked this video okay let me let me just dislike it before I even view the video you know or uh, uh, same thing with the uh, subscribers oh you know he has a certain amount of subscribers I'm not gonna take him seriously well I tell you what as I have learned over the couple months because I started this channel in February of this year um, it, it's really about the engagement and uh, hearing someone else's opinion on these topics I've learned instead of reporting the news it's more of engaging while reporting the news 
in giving your opinion and asking for opinions. That's what I learned. Um, you know, and just in general, kind of, um, kind of talking with the viewer, you know, and that's why I read the comment section. I responded to the comment section roughly because my intention was, you know, to, you know, view you as equal, equal. And I've said previously, coupled with um, being on the same playing field, said I don't discriminate, you know? Um, yeah. So again, it's an honor to read your comments. It's an honor to speak on this stuff. And it's an honor to get feedback from you guys on this. And I got to say thank you so much. Um, now, I'll tell you what. My original plan was to have these videos be 10 minutes or less. But you see what happens when I start to engage. When I start to dive in deep to what these people are saying or what you guys are saying. This video is almost 40 minutes long. That's craziness right there. And I got to upload it. I got to edit, you know, and I got to hope you guys listen to what I have to say because I have listened to what you had to say and are still saying right now. And I'm thankful for that. So I would say this. If you have not already subscribe to my social media, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook. I'm really active on Instagram. Instagram is where it's at. I do reference my Instagram a lot in my YouTube videos. My Instagram and my YouTube is one. Facebook, I will get on that sooner or later. But that will be another platform where I'll be releasing information similar to YouTube. Twitter, again, I'll say this, is where in general... I would have the opportunity to dive in deep to what these fighters and organizations or companies are saying. And I would be able to uh, screenshot and post it on my social media before they delete their tweets. Um, yeah, so again, follow my social media, subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave a like or dislike. Yes, I still leave or I still see those things. You know, comment, please. Give me your perspective on what you think of this. In general, we talked about Ben Askren losing. We talked about his uh, or his reflection on his performance. We talked about Conor McGregor um, responding to Khabib's dad about not wanting to fight Khabib's training partner. We talked about uh, Conor McGregor and his Russian press conference and much more so again thank you so much for tuning in watching my video being awesome and I hope you have a good day so if you haven't already stay tuned let me see here stay tuned for more.